Hi everyone and welcome back to our Julia language tutorial series. Uh, we, last time we've created our opening view for our image puzzle game which we are currently working on and today we'll see how to start the game. Uh, to do so we will uh, create a file containing all the code of the game and we'll see how to uh, run it in several different ways. So uh, first way is using a script. A script is a file we uh, which we run directly from our, our command line. So I've, I'll open the file. Um, I'm opening it using uh, GVim, which is my favorite editor. You can choose whichever editor you want. Um, let's just make it a bit bigger so you can see. So I'll open the file, you can uh, see uh, the code we've created last time. This is the init game uh, function um, that gets number of rows and the number of blocks um, in, a, in a column. So in order to run it, we need some top level code. So uh, So we'll call, uh, we'll create a new image using the test image and we'll still use Fabio and then we will create the new image using our function. And finally we will show the image. So. And I'll add some two more lines, which will be more clear in a few seconds. Um, so I've ended. Uh, I've ended uh, with uh, a little bit of a sleep period of three seconds and some print lines. So we'll sh see how it went. Uh, just we need to add uh, all of the using statements. So we're using images, image view, uh, test images, and we're using random. So you can put them all in a single line. This is um, just for convenient. Uh, we'll go back to our command line and to start a, a script, you just need to choose your program, which is Julia, and specify the file you want to run. So we'll run puzzle game. Uh, running a script is just like, um, you can think about it as opening a REPL and uh, start coding line by line. Um, so uh, Julia actually now, now opens the file and it's, it, it's starting a new Julia process and it's starting with our using statements and you can see the, the, the message we used to get from the GDK um, and it processes the file, create, compiles the, the, the function and then runs the top level code. Uh, okay, so we missed the image, I'll run it just again. You saw it's pretty slow uh, and this is because if you remember the uh, uh, just-in-time compilation property of Julia. So every time the Julia process starts, it, it compiles everything and you can see it, it takes a while to uh, cache everything each time you run. The image has just opened. Yeah, here it is. You can see the scrambled image. It waits a few seconds and then we get the code done and the process ends. So I really do not recommend using uh, scripts because you see if you have saw the, the amount of time it takes it to run. Um, you can use scripts if you know what you're doing, if uh, you're running a server or the uptime is not, uh, is not a major concern for you. But still I would recommend to use modules. Um, in, in using modules, the, the the best you can think about it is instead of running from your 
uh, command line, we will use the Julia prompt. Uh, so we can start Julia, um, activate our environment, and bring all the things we need to scope. So we actually save time that by opening the REPL once and importing everything once and we'll soon import our load our new module. So we will need to do it only once. Uh, in order to work with modules, all you need to do is uh, encapsulate our file with uh, the module keyword, module power game and At the end, I'll end the module, and and I'll just comment it so I'll know I'm ending the module. Um, so a module is actually a new um, a, a new global namespace, um, meaning that this th this code of block is not seen to anybody who's who will use it uh it's it's visible only for the inside of the module if you would like to use it from the outside you need to specify exactly what you need with the expert keyword so i'll wrap i'll do another small thing so i'll wrap uh, this code uh, inside a new function i'll call it main um, function main, which needs no properties. Uh, and I'll indent it and end the function. So now we have a main function and our top level codes, we want to distinguish between using the module and the script. So I'll use the is interactive, is interactive. Uh, this is uh, this will return a, bo a boolean stating if we're using um, a script, so it will be false. It's not interactive. So I want my code to run only if in, I'm in non-interactive mode. Uh, then I will want me to run the main function, sleep for a few seconds, and uh, state that the code is done. Um, main function um, and so this will um, state for us that we're using the we're either using it as a module and we will not run it run this part of code or if it's a script so we will run it uh, as I said for the inner scope of the module, we want to export main. Exporting is similar to a public method. So if we won't export main, we, will n we won't be able to see it from our uh, REPL. Um, but this way, it, 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 is, it is visible for us. Um, OK, so returning to our REPL, um, actually, I want to add some another package, which is called revise. Uh, revise uh, is it's a nice package. Uh, it helps us keep our process, our REPL alive for more time as it um, searches for changes in, in files included, in modules, and it helps us, it, it reduces the need to restart the process uh, every time you change something inside the code. So we're adding the, the, um, the revise package. You, you can follow the um, basic uh, documentation for the package, nothing uh, special here. So we've added the package and we'll use it using revise, uh, pre-compilation as you know it. Uh, next up, we, would, we, we want to uh, use the module. To use the module, you can't specify just using a puzzle game because it won't know where to look it for. Uh, we first need to include the file, uh, working with uh, packages or, or um, working with packages so Julia knows where to look it for. For our own creating, creating uh, module, we first need to include the file, which means just read it. Um, 
and we'll use the revised version of include, which is include t, uh, include and track, and we'll just specify the position of the, the, the path to the file, which is just here. Uh, you can notice that I used the camel case uh, for the file and for the uh, module name. This is the Julia syntax for, or Julia style for it. So I'm including the, the path for the file. Now it actually reads through the file just as it did when it was a script. It reads through the file and I can now specify that I want to use uh, uh, my, my uh, uh, module. Notice that I actually defined the module inside the REPL. The REPL itself is a new module named main. So um, just to be clear, Julia actually comes with three standard modules. Uh, the main, which is the top level for wherever we work on, so it's a REPL for us. So when I define a new model, it's under main. Uh, uh, the core module is the, co the built-in functionality of the language, and the base module is all, all sorts of useful cases and useful methods that you use whatever uh, code you need to write. So this is the way we need to load the puzzle game. We can also um, uh, delete the main and just uh, uh, keep the, uh, the dot notation so it will know that it's... Um, it is defined under the current position we are in and now we can run our function main so uh, running main we, we will see that again it's compiling uh, the the function uh, we created inside the REPL next run through the REPL it will be much more easier you saw that the function uh, got completed and we have the image um, so just to see some more uh, of the functionality we talked about. Let's go back to the function and maybe we'll add another function called rules, uh, function rules. And we can see now that uh, let's say rules just states, uh, please swap tiles to complete, complete the image and we'll end the function now this function is not vis will not be visible outside I can add it uh, inside main and call it inside main so now I've added the rules to the main function uh, and if I'll try uh, calling rules it doesn't know about rules it does know about uh, rules under yeah, under the puzzle game, I can call rules. You can see this is not defined. Uh, another way to bring to scope a specific method in a file is with um, import. So import imports exactly what you specify and not, uh, and it, it doesn't uh, read through the export. So I want to import from puzzle game puzzle let's write it like this from import main puzzle game rules so now rules did brought to my uh, uh, scope of main and this is it so I think we've covered how to run the the game in all sorts of modes uh, next we will cover the GUI and we'll see how we can interact with our image in order to play the game. Thank you for watching. Please comment below and tell me what you think and we'll see you again next time. Thank you very much.